I've been working on an easy to make weather station because people, quite a few people have asked me about my, my other one. Uh, I'll put a link in the description for the big one. Um, for me to do an, a, a, a tutorial on that is just impossible. It's all hard coded, there's no option for changing your location, there's no option for changing between miles an hour and kilometres an hour temperatures C and F sort of thing it's all hard coded and I haven't had the time to actually do it so I've been working on a simple solution this is an OLED display this is an ESP32 and this is a CC MJ CC I can't remember what it is all the parts are in the, linked in the description you can get more from Banggood this displays the external temperature so at the minute it's five and a half degrees, seventy-five percent humidity, thirteen mile an hour winds, and there's the air pressure. That's the um, the, the forecast for the next twenty-four. Oh no, it's actually the weather now, and there's the time. Uh, this is the internal temperature of twenty-three. It's hot because it's on my computer desk, and the fans underneath. So it's you know anyway. Uh, the humidity. And the ECO2, the ECO2, which is the equivalent calculated carbon dioxide level, and then you've got TVOC, which is total volatile organic compound. Now TVOCs uh, it can be anything from paints, paint strippers, solvents, wood preservatives, aerosol sprays, cleaners, you name it, it covers absolutely everything. Uh, the ECO2 is basically CO2, how much CO2 is in the, in the air. Um, it's partly carbon monoxide, but it's not exactly the same. So it's not something to rely on. It's only a, only a reference thing. So what happens is, and I don't know if I'll be able to show you, if you blow on it, you can see the CO2 goes higher. So I've just set, <laughs> just set a piece of paper off, and you, as you can see, it, the 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 alarm actually shows up. Now it's set at the minute. When the alarm goes back to normal, there's a beeper on there as well, which I've got the cover on at the minute because it's too bloody loud. It, the minute it's set, so as when it goes back to normal, it will go back to the normal reading, as you can see. You can also set it so as if the alarm goes off, it doesn't go back and it just keeps sounding the alarm. Um, this ESP32 connects directly to the internet and it gets all the data from uh, wonderground.com. So you need to register an account for that so as you can get the, the developer key. Um, and that's basically it. So what we're going to do is build it. What you'll need is three things. One, two, three. That's it. This is an ESP32, which I'm going to de-pin. I don't know why they send them with the pins. I think these are only about five quid now. That's expensive. It was about 15 quid, and that's about 20 quid. So about 40 quid, and you can build the old thing. The reason why I've used an OLED is because I like them. I don't like LCDs because of the viewing angles. Crap, but anyway... Um, first thing I'm going to do is take the pins off this and then I'll come back. I've de-pinned it. If you want to know why I de-pin everything, it's because I think it looks a lot cleaner rather than having bloody big pins stuck out everywhere anyway. What I'm going to do, I'm going to stick that on the back of this, like that. So that can sit on the back and then that it's going to be sitting externally somewhere, I don't know where yet. So, I'm going to stick that on there and then I can start wiring that up. Now, this isn't an instruction video on how to program those things. It's not easy to get them set up to start with. It's the same as the ESP8266, I think it was. There are some of them, they can be a nightmare to actually get them working on Arduino IDE. But once you get it working, they're fantastic. I mean, they are they are actually dual core. Um, I don't know if it does Bluetooth. 
and Wi-Fi. And they are very ridiculously cheap for what they are. Ridiculous. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick that on there and I'm going to have the USB connector pointing outwards so as I can just plug something in it. Then I'll come back again. I stuck it onto the back. So what I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do, if I can find me all the glasses so I can see what I'm doing, uh, get rid of that. I'm going to connect um, the ground on this to the ground on that, obviously. VCC goes to VIN, which is that one there. Uh, clock goes to D14, which I can't see. Anyway, you put CLK off here onto D14 on there. Um, DIN, which is DIN, goes to D13. RES on here goes to D19 on there and then DC off there goes to D32 on there. So I'll connect them up and then I'll come back again. I've soldered the OLED up as you can see. What I've used on that um, to stick that down is just this, it's 3M tape basically, it comes from Banggood, everything I get comes from Banggood. I always buy stuff in the think, thinking that I might need that, and yeah, I do. I use a lot of this stuff. Anyway, link in the description, as usual. So that's already soldered up. Um, what I'm going to do now is solder. Well, there's only three components. There's a one, two, three, four components. I'm going to solder this up. Um, now this goes, I'll get me other glasses. So we've got on here, VCC goes to 3, it's actually 3.3 .3 volts, which is that one there, or 3V3 it says. Uh, ground goes to ground, obviously. SCL uh, goes to D22, which I can't see. Where's D22? Anyway, SCL goes to D22 on there. Um, SDA goes to D21. And WAK, uh, which is that one, goes to ground on here, anyone. The, the, that's just to make that stay alive all the time rather than just polling it every now and again. You can put that to uh, to a pin so as it will only wake that up when it's needed, but I ain't bothered. The power consumption is ridiculously low anyway. So, it's best to actually have this on a fly lead somewhere, uh, purely because it's to get it away from any heat generated by this, because this it doesn't get hot, it gets warm. So, to have this in there especially if it's... I'm going to do a case for this, so you can't really have it in the case, so always have it on a fly lead, so I'm going to have a lead probably about that long, and then I'm going to design the case so as I can just slot it out the side. So I'm going to solder that on, and then I'll come back again. I soldered the, uh, the TVOC and ECO2 sensor thing there, on there. Anyway the last thing to do is the buzzer and that goes to I can't remember pin 27 which is actually on the I think I did it on the top yeah where is it where is it where is it there it is so what I've done is I've just slightly bent those pins outwards and I've done it that way because it'll fit just directly on there so that the buzzer can actually stick out the top of the case when I've designed it. Um, so that can go on there. So I'm going to do that and I'll come back again. I know there's a bit of a gap but it's done. The buzzer sits out the top, these are just vents. And on the back, there's the sensor. It has to be kept outside because of self-heating. Um, 
the ESP32 does get hot so there's that and it sits at just a bit of an angle and there is the power for you just plug it into a, a, a phone charger basically so there you have it it's all done all the description all the link links to all the parts and the sketch and the pinouts and everything else is in the description um, and the TVOC which is a total volatile just, oh, f what the hell's up to that? Oh, for f sake well sold of those <laughs> Now, can't even speak now. Uh, the last thing is the bees. A uh, beezer. Well, I know there's a big bit, bit of a. <laughs>